creative continuity. We bring the convention to you. If there were not the Fantastic Four that everybody uh, expects right off the top, it's kind of like an origin story. You see these characters grow and develop and slowly become the people that everybody, and the team, the family that everybody expects us to be, which is pretty cool. Well, it is very much that. It's very much an origin story. I mean, the, the, our movie is very different in tone to the kind of first Fantastic Four movies. Um, this exists in a universe all by itself. And Josh pitched me his vision of what the movie would be, a more grounded, dramatic, um, emotional, character-driven uh, story that, like he, he's been saying, and we said all through photography, like it was more science than science fiction. It's much more ground in a sense of reality. These are real kids, real people. The tone is much darker. You know, I think X Men did a really good job of kind of re-energizing that franchise and re-visualizing it, and and kind of taking these characters as an origin. And so we're kind of trying to do the same thing as far as the origin story goes with these guys. Hopefully we can deliver something that people are, are passionate about and, and proud of. Looks like we're ready to make the Jimmy fucking changas around here. <laughs> uh. It's only been 11 years in the waiting. Ryan, why do you think people are so in love with Deadpool? Well, I, think he, I think this character inhabits a, a space in the comic universe that no other person can or will ever inhabit. I mean, you know, it's got everything you'd ever want. Uh, you know, f for one, I just think it's, a, it's an absolute miracle that a studio let us make Deadpool, let alone a rated R Deadpool. I, I still can't. But yeah! I tell you that they said we're promoting an R-rated film, the first real R-rated superhero film. On the back of these, it says, "Please be aware that many members of your audience may be under 18 years of age." Yeah. And to those of you, I say, you're gonna fucking love this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's everything you know that we loved about the comics. I mean, it's we have a guy that obviously is gonna break the fourth wall. Uh, you're obviously gonna see. What I, I, and this is just my opinion, but I think the most faithful uh, adaptation of a, of a super suit from a comic to a movie I've ever seen. We've told a story that, 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 that your average uninitiated uh, uh, moviegoer is aware of what the character is and what he's going through and how he became this, the Merc with the Mouth. Certainly there, you know, on a movie like this, there's always going to be a ton of visual effects and green screen and the like, but the... The key for all of us was to make a movie that felt authentic, and it's almost impossible to make something that feels authentic if it, if it isn't. And so, um, despite all the visual effects that are undoubtedly going to uh, be all over the movie, the, the, the amount of builds that we, we were able to do, the construction of not just sets, but, but other uh, but characters, and, and uh, the, the props and things that might otherwise be done in post, uh, it allowed the actors to actually physically be there on locations with actual structures and, and uh, creatures that they could interact with. And it, it just, it gave the whole thing a, uh, it took something that could be a real effort to sort of make something look real and it made that part effortless. And then we could concentrate on other things that were more important like, you know, making the story good and, and the, the characters as strong as they could be. The way that we, that they did this one, that JJ made everything very tactile and, and back to kind of what they, when they were originally working on it, that it felt kind of um, uh, impromptu in a way, that mm -hmm. they were kind of a bunch of people isolated somewhere, kind of doing their own thing, kind of outside the studio system. And even though that's not really the case here, it still felt that kind of, that sense of everyone was making it up as we go along. And it still felt urgent and tactile and, and like to, to see everything being practically operated and uh, puppets and everything you could just pick up and hold, uh, I think was was more exciting. And shooting it on film, I think that was, mm -hmm. the, just made it even more. You know, we have so many great surprises for the fans. I think the most exciting thing is we have an amazing new cast of characters and we have some really incredible new talent that we're going to be introducing. And that's probably what we're the most excited about. I think we have a, a chance to continue a legacy and continue it well and pay respect, but at the same time go off on a new adventure, obviously with us, the new characters. So uh, it's a great balance of both, and I'm very, very happy to be a part of this. I can look forward to a wonderful movie, I think. Uh, it was a great experience for me, and I had a great time doing it. We have a fantastic uh, cast. Um, we have the, the skill and the wit and the... 
um, ambition of, uh, of J.J. Abrams. Great script by um, uh, one of our original screenwriters, Larry Kasdan. And I was delighted to be involved and I'm proud to be able to represent uh, this film for the audience. It's weird when you make movies to have them enter the sort of the bloodstream of the culture. And this, these movies do, they're bigger than other things, they just stay with you forever. I wrote one 30 years ago, I wrote one last year, and there hasn't really been a break in that time when people weren't talking about Star Wars or wondering about Star Wars. And that's a very unique situation to be in the movies. I think because it's been woven into my mind since I was a child, and there was a, I remember one of my first Christmases, it was, it was on the television and it was this phenomenal thing that not only looked incredible and was exciting, but it seemed to have real depth and mysticism to it. Um, and I can't really believe that I'm in that. You know, there's, there's so much, there was so much preparation time and, and, and introspection and how do I do this and, you know, what, what can I bring to it and talking with JJ and filming it. but sharing it with everyone finally i think that's that's probably the, the most special part of the whole thing yeah what he said <laughs>is the greatest part I have ever had in my life. I'm biased, I think he's the greatest comic book character ever made. I, I just, I don't really see him as, as Charles Xavier or Professor X, I just see him as, as Patrick Stewart. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and anything, anything that he did, I, I try and do a copy, you know, I try and make it better. But, um, <laughs> but you know, to be fair, he had some moves and stuff, but he's like, he's really old. And um, <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. I'm only joking. He's amazing, and I oh, I, he paid for my house. Um, <laughs> Nicholas, how, how now that you now that you've lived with Beast for a while, uh, where where are you with him? I can't concentrate because I'm still psyched about the Deadpool trailer. Sick. Hey, wait a minute. Just wait one minute. Oh. Oh, hold on. I'm just pretty pissed. I want to tell you, this is ridiculous. Yeah? Well, I'm going to take the picture and get it over with. You, you think I can just do cameos. <laughs> I'm one of the great photographers, and by the way, all of you are in charge. I charge you with the responsibility of writing to the Motion Picture Academy and saying they need an award for best cameo. But we'll <laughs> save that for another panel. Here, and no camera. Camera. Here we are. Here we are. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Thank you. <laughs> you have to hop into this picture. All right. What's up? How y'all doing out there? All right, make it good. Now that's the way to end a panel. You guys, thank you so good much for the yeah. 20th Century Fox panel. Whenever you lose your temper, there's a part of you that thinks, ah, oh, you know, I should, I should go and apologize. I should go and say sorry. I should do something to make reparation toward what I did. But uh, the best thing about being a villain is you just find a twist so that you're always right. And uh, it's a great way to live. I mean, not in real life, but just, <laughs> just as Dr. Doom. That is literally the first time I've seen you run, ever. Ever, ever. 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 I don't run. Are you okay? I made it. And everyone got lightsabers. Woo! I went green. Yes. Controversial. Yeah. Hey, that there's a lot of people who camping out since Wednesday night and that then you've kind of like, well, we better say something good. You know, it just oh. makes it more of a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. so.